Hello and welcome to the Thursday, June 8th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Quick diary today from Manuel about the DMARC records in Colombian domain. So that's dot .co, Manuel, of course, being from Colombia. And he compares here also how the government domains, that gov.co, and the university domains, edu.co, do and how they compare. Well, a common wisdom would sort of assume that government domains are probably better about setting up the mark records than educational or university domains. Turns out the opposite is true. While neither does terribly well, the universities are actually here a little bit better than government websites uh, with uh, 92.4% having uh, no DMARC protection for government websites and 91%, so just a percent less for educational for university domains. We do keep uh, getting questions about uh, DMARC, DKIM, SPF, and the like from readers, which is uh, why we do focus in some of these diaries on these numbers. It is something that you certainly should investigate. It's not perfect. It has problems, but it does prevent a significant part of of the impersonation problem. And one of the biggest problems of DMARC, uh, which I think is actually its biggest advantage, is that it forces you to find sort of all these rogue IT systems that people set up, uh, those third-party vendors that uh, they contracted with to send emails on your behalf. And VMware released an update for VMware Area Operations for Networks uh, that fixes three vulnerabilities, two of them critical, one of them high. The critical vulnerabilities, first one, CFSS score of 9.8, which is a command injection vulnerability. We also have an authenticated deserialization vulnerability, CFSS score of 9.1. And then the not quite critical one, CSS score 8.8 is information disclosure vulnerability. So the one to watch here is CVE 2023-2887. That's the command injection vulnerability. And yes, we got more Android malware to talk about. Uh, this is actually a malware, a better spyware that uh, first has been sort of making the news in April, Dr. Webb uh, found it back then. And uh, since then, a number of other uh, researchers, companies have found additional affected uh, software that is being found in the Google Play Store. So far, there are about 200 uh, compromised apps in the Google Play Store, and they're being downloaded uh, as I record this. The total number of downloads, according to Dr. Webb, is about 450 million by now. Spin OK is an SDK that uh, sort of implements simple uh, games and uh, possibly winnings kind of... Uh, distributed as a marketing API for your Android applications. That may be why developers are including it. And the end result is that the SDK, if included in the application, will not just report back all kinds of hardware and software configuration details from the device, but it also has the ability to read files from the device. It's also being used to inject JavaScript and ads into the applications, loading it, and a number of other malicious things like, for example, it's able to grab the clipboard. Many of the applications have been removed by now, but given the large number of applications and that there are still new applications being published with this SDK, the number that's currently available in the Google Play Store is larger than zero. In the show notes, I'll link uh, to the blog post by Dr. Webb as well as to the more recent one by CloudSec. They also include, in the case of compromise, like for example, the URL being used to report data back to the attacker. 
And then I got one more patch and vulnerability, and that's uh, for Cisco's AnyConnect client. It's a approach escalation vulnerability, an attacker uh, could abuse uh, to gain system privileges on Windows. Quite common, these kind of vulnerabilities in VPN clients, in part because they need to reconfigure network properties, and that's why they often need elevated privileges. Cisco AnyConnect had a number of vulnerabilities in the past. Some of them were exploited. Well, that's it for today. Yesterday, I think I forgot to add the link to our webcast next week. So that's a repeat of the RSA panel. I hope I will remember to add um, the link uh, this time around. So hope to see you there. Otherwise, thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.